welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about what happens when you put capacitors in series. Now here I'm still using the pictures, not the circuit symbols. Have the three capacitors, C1, C2, C3, the battery in series. What does it mean to say series? What it means is this. We know that when you attach a conductor to a battery, the charge is going to move because if you have a delta V, you have an electric field, charge moves, approaches the equilibrium. So let's think about what happens in series. So charge is going to leave the high side of the battery to raise the potential of this plate right here. Put a charge Q right there. That's the stop because there's an insulator. <coughs> now, the same charge has to return into the other side of the battery because you don't have any net gain or loss of charge. Therefore, I must have pulled off minus Q from that plate. <clears throat> now, again, electrical forces are so great, you have to be extremely close to balancing the positive and negative charges. So what happened is you'd have to have a Q go from here to here, remove a Q from there. You'd have to have Q go from here to here, you remove a Q from there, put a Q there. So you see what it means by series. Whatever enters one of them has to leave the other end, enter the next one, leave. So whatever enters, in this case, it enters C3, leaves the other end of C3, enters C2, leaves the other end of C2, enters C1, Leaves the other end of C1, goes back to the battery. In series, whatever enters, if two things are in series or three or four, whatever enters one has to leave into the next one. Has to enter that one, leave into the next one. You can have the same charge on every capacitor. When we get to talking about current, we'll say every, if current can flow through it, the same current flowing through each one. We don't say that for capacitor because <clears throat> there's insulator. It's a mysterious thing, the capacitor. You have a current in the circuit, but charge does not go through the capacitor. <laughs> it enters one end, comes out the other end, maintains the current in the circuit. No current through the capacitor. There's a insulator in the middle. So series means whatever goes into one exits enters the next one, the next one. Whatever's in series, they're chained together in sequence. Okay. So now if we look at this, <clears throat> we know they all have the same charge, but what about the voltages of each one? Well, if I write the relationship that the charge of a capacitor equals its capacitance. Let's just take C1 times delta V1. Then I can rearrange that and say delta V1 equals Q over C1. I'm not saying Q1 because in this case C1, C2, C3 all have the same charge. I just put Q. So I can say that the voltage, I'm going to clean up a little bit here, remove some of these arrows. <clears throat> that the voltage on this first one, delta B1, is equal to that charge over C1. The voltage on the second one, delta B2, is the charge for C2. Voltage on the third one, equal to that charge over C3. Now, if you go back to the previous video where the capacitors were in parallel, what you would have noticed the rule in parallel 
everything must have the same delta V. But they had different charges. In series, the rule is everything must have the same charge, but they have different delta Vs. Now, what do we do with this information? Well, <clears throat> we have to kind of do a thought experiment. We have to imagine, and if you were taking a physics lab, you would know how this works. Imagine you wanted to measure delta V from one side to the other. Or we won't even imagine the physics lab. Let's just ask the way this thing is drawn. That if I say this coming out of the high terminal, is some V plus, or no, it doesn't come, voltage doesn't come out. The high terminal and the wire, that side, delta V plus. On the other side, the low terminal, the black wire, V minus. We know that from the red to the black, we have delta V equal to that V plus minus V minus. The difference between the two uh, potentials. So delta V is V plus minus V minus. You see that we have the same V plus. And I'm sorry, I, wrote, I put V1 here. That's a mistake. That's V minus. <laughs> that is not V1. That is V minus. Okay. <coughs> So the red, I'm calling it V plus, and the black side, the wire, that side of the battery, V minus. <clears throat> that delta V, the difference between the V plus and the V minus. We have the same difference across the three capacitors. See the red on the right side of C3 and the black wire on the left side of C1. Therefore, we conclude that the delta V, which is the difference between the two terminals of the battery, is equal to the voltages across the three capacitors. In other words, delta V is delta V1 plus delta V2 plus delta V3. <coughs> Let me remove this. So again, I had a mistake earlier. This Right side, the red, is what I call V plus. I'm going to take it off now. <laughs> and the left side, that's V minus. So delta V, v there's the difference between V plus and V minus. So you see that red wire, black wire, the delta V of the battery is going to equal those voltages across the three capacitors. Because I'm going the same from the low and the high side differential. All right, now, because of what I have up there for the capacitors, I know that delta V1, you look up there, is Q over C1. It's right above C1. And the delta V2, is Q over C2. And for the third capacitor, I know that delta V3 is Q over C3. You notice all three have the same Q. So I can rewrite that as, can factor out the Q, say one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over C3. <clears throat> That's for delta V. Now what's the game that we like to play? The game we like to play is we want to pretend instead of those three capacitors in series, I had one capacitor that was equivalent. This is equivalent. Equivalent or equal. That's all I got. C E Q. All right. If this one is truly equivalent, I would have the same charge for this equivalent capacitor, 
same delta V. Therefore, I can rearrange it and say delta V would be equal to that charge over C E cubed. Aha! It's the same. For this to be equivalent, I must be using the same battery to get the same charge. Therefore, this delta V is the same as this delta V up here. So I can take this equation right here, Q over CEQ, see this delta V right here. I slide all the way across. Say so this is equal to Q over CEQ. See, that's the delta V there. That's the delta V there, Q over C, Q. Now, if I look at this right here, I say the same Q is everywhere. I can factor that out and factor that out. Now I get what's called a reciprocal relationship. 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 is 1 over C, E, Q. Here's the relationship down here. This is a relationship for series capacitors. <clears throat> you put two or three or more capacitors, you can extend the logic. You do a reciprocal sum. 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, etc. is equal to 1 over CEQ. After you do the math, when I solve for CEQ, you have to flip the thing when you get to the end. We'll do examples in a later video. But for now, I want to end this video, having introduced the equation for series capacitors. We'll come back in another video to solve a problem.